Good to have you. In a welcomed development, kidnapped students and educators from a combined school in Kuriga, Kaduna State, have regained freedom from their abductors. Governor Ubasani confirmed their release, expressing gratitude to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for his support. The Nigerian Army's efforts were also praised. The ordeal began on March 7th when gunmen took over 100 individuals, demanding a ransom. Now, after their release, the 137 victims are receiving medical care, signaling a hopeful end to a troubling time. We're now being joined from Kaduna by Arise correspondent Nisi Gabriel for a quick update. Nisi, it's good to have you with us. So how did the, the release, how was it secured? <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Well, how the release was secured? Well, it's still sketchy for now because if you look at the statement put out by the governor of Cardinal State, he did use the word release. And if you also look at the statement put out by the defense headquarter, the word rescue was used there. Well, how, that's, how the whole process went about is yet to be known. It's still sketchy. But what we do know, according to the statement put out by the defense headquarter, is that 137 of these hostages of these school, school children have been released. And at, the, at this point, we are waiting at the Sakashim Ibrahim house, that's the Kadna State government house, uh, for the governor to receive them. And that is what uh, is happening now. And quickly, if you look behind me, you will see uh, some mobile policemen. What we do understand is that these are troops of the Special Intervention Squad that was launched by the Inspector General of Police a few weeks ago when he was in Kaduna. And it is expected that with this Special Intervention Squad, they will be able to curb the menace of insecurity in Kaduna State. So that's all we know for now. Aaron. All right. Um, Nisi, please give us, help us clarify the figures, because we are hearing divergent figures concerning how many were actually released or rescued, as the case may be. What is the actual figure of that you are hearing? All right, let's walk down memory lane a little bit. Earlier, uh, the day of the abduction, I can remember we went to Kuriga town with the, log with the governor of the state and the person of Governor Obasani. And there we met the school teacher who narrowly escaped that incident that day. And narrating that incident to the governor, he did say that 287 of uh, the school children were abducted and that was how uh, that was how that story broke out everywhere it went viral because it is expected that as a teacher of their school he must have done some sort of health head count and the rest but not until this moment and that's the question on the minds of many why wait to this time to now let the whole world know that it's not 287 it's 137 that's the question on the lips of many. But be that as, as it may, what we are hearing is that, well, they just wanted to ensure that they, re they rescue these school children first before any other information is uh, let out to the general public. So according to the defense headquarters, they are saying 137. But earlier then, the local teacher there did say 287 but we believe that before the end of the day and as soon as the governor receives these school children more details will unfold maybe by then we'll be able to hear from the parents of these school children we'll be able to hear from the teacher once again because we need to know if some sort of due diligence uh, went into the course of this did they do another head count uh, the school about the school register how many pupils went to school that day these are the kind of questions we'll be asking and we hope we'll get the right answers Nee. Indeed, uh, Nisi, I'm sure the question on most people's lips uh, right now is that uh, the issue of ransom, was ransom paid to secure, you know, the uh, rescue or release of uh, these uh, children? Yes, uh, everybody wants to know, and that's the million dollar question on the lips of many, because uh, some will tell you, why is it that the uh, military are using the word rescue and the governor is using the word release. So what's, what sort of negotiation went down? Well, this information are still sketch, sketchy and they are highly classified and uh, we are not privy to that at this point, at this moment. We want to believe that in due course, once these children arrive and they are able to reunite with their parents, they are done with the medical treatment they are receiving, we believe that more information and more details will unfold.
All right, um, Nisi, what's the state of health of the children at the moment in time? We know in the earlier reports, our opening um, statement said that they were receiving medical treatment. Was there any reason to, was there any cause for yeah, concern uh, or were these just routine um, checks to actually be sure that these children were safe? Well, we've only seen pictures and the, from the pictures uh, we've seen out there, uh, the, the children do not look in a very healthy state. The, those pictures are horrible. They are, they, are, they, are, they are very sad, I must say, because you could, from that picture you can tell that these children have been put through undue stress. They've strict mouths, they've, they've, been, they've not had uh, good food, good water to drink. So I want to believe that whatsoever medical treatment is being done or being carried out as we speak is just to assess the general health condition of uh, these school children. But for now, we do not have the exact details as to how many persons sustained injuries, the degree of injury they sustained, and uh, is, is there any casualty? We do not have that information for now. But we do know and we are optimistic that as soon as these children come to the Cardinal State Government House, that's the Sakashim Ibrahim House, as soon as the governor receives them, we will be able to lay our hands on more vital information that will be helpful. Very good, uh, Nisi. Um, uh, beyond the special intervention squad that we saw file out uh, behind you moments ago, um, are you seeing any effort by the state government to prevent a recurrence of more school kidnappings so far? Because uh, that group of men, you know, don't seem to be enough to cover a large state like Kaduna, which is fast becoming the epicenter of uh, mass uh, school abductions. Yes, uh, you're right, uh, Niyi. Uh, and we want to believe that uh, the, the number of personnel we saw, file, you saw filing out right behind me moments ago, are not the total number of uh, personnel that will make up that special intervention squad. And efforts of the state government, we do know that the state government are trying, and just like the statement they put out by President Bolatinobu a few moments ago, he, he did say we have to make our schools safer. And how do we do that? In that statement, it was stated clearly that there should be collaboration between the federal and the state government. So moving forward, we do hope to see more deployments to public schools and schools that are not properly fenced, it is better you just close them down and move kids to schools closer to the metropolis where there's some sort of civilization or some sort of security around that place since uh, we have so much ungoverned spaces in this part of the country. And we also know that the state government has recruited 7,000 vigilante and they are currently receiving uh, training at the, the police command here in Cardinal. So quite a number of efforts being made by the state government, but more needs to be done to ensure that our schools are safe and secured. All right, safe and secure. Um, this in this our conversation, the affected, one of the affected parties has to be the parents. I've not heard anything about them. Where are they? Because if you are the girl, if, if you are in Cardinal right now, have you spoken to any parents? What is their state of mind at this moment in time? When will they be receiving their children back? And also, because certainly when we, when we are talking about divergent numbers, parents will be the one to, they, that will be the litmus test because certainly if a parent comes out to say, I have not seen my child, then you know that the numbers that have been posted and the, and the actual number will actually, or rather the actual number will actually be revealed. Talk to me about the parents, their state of mind, where they are right now, and when are they expected to receive back their children? Well, earlier in the day, I, I do know that most of the parents of these school children that have been released, we're not even aware of uh, this recent development. But later in the day, as uh, the day progressed, we do understand that the states, the governor of the state, that was in person of Senator Obasani, is expected to meet with them uh, sooner rather than later, right here in the government's house. And definitely, we do know that uh, as a parent going through such a uh, type of incident, it's not easy. Uh, there will be psychological trauma and other stuff. They, they need support, they need uh, care. And we also know that UNICEF and other uh, agencies like that, and also the Cardinal State uh, Government, the 
Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs have been going down to Koriga to interface with the parents and to provide some sort of uh, relief materials for them just to ensure that they have something just to give them show them the sign of we are with you in this time of distress we are your, your struggle is our struggle your pain is our pain just to share in their pain and to show concern we know of such efforts going on behind the scene but like i said earlier in due course sooner rather than later we are hoping to see that the parents of these students, of these of this release school children, all their representatives arrive here at the government house to interact with the governor and most likely maybe to reunite uh, with their uh, children. But we are on ground, our rise is on ground, and as soon as that happens, we'll break the story. All right, Nisi, but uh, how are Kaduna residents reacting to the spate of uh, kidnappings uh, within and around their domain? And are they demanding more uh, from their state government? Of course, the primary responsibility of every government is to protect lives and properties. And uh, that's what every citizen or resident of the state expects. So the residents expect the state governments and also the federal government to do more. And that is why if you, in recent times, the state governor, the person of France, Neto Basani, has been clamoring for state police because most governors will say they don't have, they're not in control of the army or neither are they in control of the police. So they always have to rely on uh, the federal government for issues that have to do with security. But as the residents of Kaduna are saying, they are calling on the federal government to do more. They need more boots on ground to cover uh, 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 vulnerable areas and areas prone to uh, bandits attack and other forms of insecurity in the state. I want to say many thanks to you. We'll simply keep in tabs with you because this is a developing story. And when the governor actually arrives and starts briefing, certainly we'll catch up with you on that. Thank you very much, Nisi.